Nerd Herd bringing you another edition of Chuck's Movie Minute. This week we are taking a look at my most anticipated movie of the summer, and that is War for the Planet of the Apes. Super, super excited for this movie. I was such a fan of the first two, and I was never a fan of the original series or the Mark Wahlberg one, but these movies completely sucked me in, so I was really, really hyped for this one. And I gotta tell you, it delivered on every level. So let's start with my rating. I'm gonna go 9.8 out of 10. I'll tell you why in a minute. And just heads up, the very, very end of this review is going to be mild spoilers. So Jump In takes place 10 years after Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Really, really picks up fast. Uh, soldiers coming in to seize this camp. So basically, there's uh, a few pocket remaining uh, of the U.S. military that are searching out for Caesar to try to take him down. They believe if they can kill Caesar, that the rest of the apes will disband or they can kill them. Uh, they've captured hundreds of them as well, and they're putting them to work. We'll get into that. So Woody Harrelson's character, the colonel, absolutely menacing. He plays a tremendous villain. But i got to tell you, the motion capture and the special effects has even jumped up from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It is so realistic. They focus so much on the emotion, the faces of the apes. You get to see some new characters come in. Steve Zahn's Bad Ape is a much, much needed comic relief in an otherwise serious movie. This is a straight-up war movie. Like, Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk, but just with apes and humans. It is brutal. It is a gut punch in the same way that Logan was at certain points of this film. But then they set up uh, little pieces for potentially another movie, but if not, just nice little nods to the original. Um, not really spoilers here, but just ahead. Uh, so, for example, uh, Caesar has a younger son now named Cornelius, and then the young blonde girl uh, that we see is named Nova, the young blonde mute, who is a throwback to the character from the 70s movies, the blonde mute woman that Charlton Heston was with. So nice little nods to the original series there, and possibly a way to be able to retell that story, because we do know back in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, they mentioned the space shuttle, the Icarus, being gone. So uh, we'll see maybe if they want to go with that. But if not, this was a great way to wrap up this trilogy. Super, super happy with the way this came together. It was emotional. It had the great comic beats. The plot ran through straight through. No holes. No lagging beats. It comes in at 2 hours and 20 minutes and it blows by super quick. So that really says something about this movie. But I never blinked. It was just so visceral, so emotional for a 90% CGI movie. What they did with these characters, the motion capture really needs an Oscar category, but needless to say, you guys have to get out and see this movie. It's going to make buku bucks. It, I was, I left the theater crying. Uh, now I want to get into the mild spoilers. So needless to say, go see this movie, but spoilers ahead, spoilers ahead. So the reason why I gave this movie 9.8 out of 10 is because they kill Caesar at the end, and I was super, super sad to see that. Uh, needless to say, though, they definitely have set it up for characters to go forward. I don't know that they will make another Another movie but I'm really excited to see that no after credits clip on this one either so uh, but needless to say check this one out as always check out all my reviews on Chuck's Movie Minute on YouTube and Facebook make sure you check out my weekly podcast the Get Your Geek On podcast and check out our sponsors Comic Skin where you can slab it yourself and then Bad Jeepster Rings one of the greatest custom jewelry makers out there so this week's episode of Chuck's Movie Minute War for the Planet of the Apes 9.8 out of 10 double thumbs up get out there see it every way you can you guys have yourselves a week, and we'll be back talking about Comic-Con next week on Get Your Geek On.